And this is Goku Sun DBZ, and I welcome you back to a, another special top 10 list on Saturday. Now, next Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to be doing one list over a period of two days because it's going to be a top 50 list. So stay tuned for that. Uh, of course, tomorrow is going to be the top 10 Street Fighter characters. So stay tuned for that as well. But uh, next week, the top 50 special is going to be the top 50 pop songs. Slash pop hits, but you get my point. And today, as a special top 10, since I'm playing on in a few hours, going to see Captain America Civil War, I figured one, since also I've been doing comics for a while, reviews, Top 10 Graphic Novels. Now, obviously graphic novels being special collections, or as some um, also refer to it as tradebacks. But, nevertheless, these are my own personal, some of my own personal favorite graphic novels, special collections, and I recommend people check out. Coming in, the first honorable mentions I'm going to mention today first. Uh, the first honorable mention, Superman, The Black Ring, which is actually really interesting. And you have a lot of different characters in that. Next is called Doom War. Basically, Doom is, uh, in Laveria, is finding it out with, uh, was it, uh, uh, Black Panther and his nation. Uh, next one is called Onslaught Reborn. Now, for those of you who may not know much about Onslaught, I recommend you check him out. Interesting character. He's really the combination of Magneto and Pro Professor or Charles Xavier. Basically, somehow, their consciousness merged together and created this insanely over-jumbo size super power looking version of like Magneto and he gets insanely powerful so powerful in fact that he ends up taking cooperation of bad guys and good guys together just to defeat him in particular people who play a major role in that is uh, the Fantastic Four but in cooperation also with characters like uh, Mr. Sinister and even Apocalypse as powerful as Apocalypse is Apocalypse has to join with the good guys in order to defeat Onslaught. So if that tells you anything how powerful Onslaught is, that Apocalypse has to actually help the good guys out to defeat him. Because by himself, Apocalypse is n not near as strong as Onslaught. Onslaught's power surpasses Apocalypse's power. And that's kind of crazy to think about. Because Apocalypse is this like super powerful mutant, but... Yep, well, once you combine those two, but... Now, that is more storyline of the original Onslaught. Now, Onslaught Reborn is a little different, but... I'm not going to try to have this go on and on, because I've still got a lot of other graphic novels to mention. Um, special one that was like, I forget, four or five issues long... Uh, called Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. Though, to be fair... If you look at pictures and stuff of all the dead characters and stuff throughout Marvel, there are some characters you don't see dead that don't even appear in it. In particular, most of the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy are still alive. So I guess they figured somewhere to hide out and survive. Next up is... Uh, our will mention is called The Darkness, Depths of Hell. Really good series. Another one is called Witchblade Redemption. Another great uh, graphic novel series. Batman Beyond 2.0, Justice Lords Beyond. Which is definitely an interesting one on my head. One of my more preferable favorite um, graphic novels revolving around the Batman Beyond universe. 
because most people knows me knows I prefer Batman Beyond to normal Batman, but my preferable is Terry McGinnis Batman. Everybody's got their own personal favorite though they like. And the last honorable mention, which is getting a, has an anime and movie coming out in the next few months, which thankfully is going to be radar, and that is Batman: The Killing Joke. So, and that's the end of the honorable mentions. Here it is coming in at number ten: Spawn Resurrection. Which is uh, stretches about six issues or seven issues around that, but it all starts around like episode two fifty. Uh, Spawn comes back to life. Of course, Spawn now has an awesome sword. It looks like it came from Soul Calibur games because he even has a face and eyes on it and stuff. And um, he has a sort of a new look now because he kind of appears now with a little bit of like a mouth and teeth and stuff so kind of remind and with the big tongue kind of reminds me a little bit of more venom in those aspects coming in at number nine is a special mini series about revolve around a group of anti-heroes uh, four particular characters and it is called venom circle of four they're basically contracted by the devil and to in order to stop and basically destroy Blackheart, which is the main antagonist of this particular series. And on the sidelines of the graphic novel, we see a, like a little bit of some going on involving Doctor Strange, but yeah, never mind that. But you know, here on the other aspects, uh, it mainly revolves around these four characters. Uh, X-23, uh, a female version of Ghost Rider, Red Hulk, and last but not least, Flash Thompson Venom, of course. Much has like a guns and stuff like that. Interesting. But it's a very enjoyable miniseries. I will say it's definitely one of the more unique and more original graphic novels done, obviously, by Marvel. Coming in at number 8 is a really interesting uh, main series done by Image Comics. Now, this is a collection of issues 1 through 6. It's a very unique and interesting art style. I've reviewed issues, I think, 1 and 3 of it, because they're the only individual issues I have. And that is The Cinder. Which is a great science fiction graphic novel. It's not a superhero type graphic novel. It's much more science fiction based. If you enjoyed, even to a small extent, things like uh, some elements in this graphic novel reminds me a little bit of the Spielberg film called uh, AI, Artificial Intelligence. Strictly from the more artistic standpoint, it reminds me more so of that than anything else. Coming up... At number seven, Spider Gwen, which, of course, this is only issues one through five of the Abrader Spider Gwen. This is Explain Radioactive Spider Gwen, which is an ongoing series, obviously. It has no uh, graphic novel or trade back yet, where Radio Spider Gwen does. This is, of course, the introduction to more or less the life and character of Spider Gwen, of course, being Gwen Stacy, of course. As I've mentioned before in past things, uh, in this particular alternative uh, Spider-Verse is Gwen Stacy gets bit by the radioactive spider gains powers. Peter Parker actually ends up, rather than becoming Spider-Man, he becomes the Lizard instead of uh, Dr. Connors. So yeah, interesting needless to say. Spider-Man Universe has a lot of multiverse type things, sort of like DC in those respects. Which we also see, obviously, in things such as Web Warriors. Coming at number six, Thanos, the Infinity Revolution. 
And um, this is more or less the backstory of uh, Thanos. We learn and see him as a younger and stuff being from his home plan. See how he ends up becoming manipulating stuff like he meets this woman stuff he doesn't realize until later on like she's Lady Death. He's one of the only people that can see her. And it's really interesting in depth and it does help uh, show more layers to the character of Thanos. But it does also show how evil and uh, dark he can be. But it also shows a completely different side which we've never seen from Thanos in the animated shows or what we're going to see in the movies. This shows a completely different look and aspect. And we get to see more in depth like the history of Thanos, which is why I highly recommend it for anybody who calls himself uh, or considers himself a fan of Thanos. I highly recommend you check out Thanos the Infinity Revolution. Coming in at number five is a Omnibus uh, special collection, which is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, which is definitely one of my favorite now officially non-canon things. Of course, uh, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire takes place between the time periods in Star Wars of Episode 5, Empire Strikes Back, and Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. It takes place somewhere in the middle range right there. It's really interesting. Of course, we see in it, obviously, there's a lot of Boba Fett in it. You have a lot of Vader. You have Jabba, Jabba Do Hut. You have, also, I'm trying to mirror the name now of, like, this green guy. He's, like, a high ranking of sorts in the world he's from. And it's clear him and Vader hate each other, but both of them have very high respect and regard for, of course, the Emperor Darth. Sidious, a.k.a. Palpatine. But it's really good. If you've never read Star Wars Shows the Empire, I would recommend you check out the graphic novel. And if you get a chance, also check out the actual novel. Or check out the Nintendo 64 game, Shows the Empire. Which, by the way, is actually a really fun game. Hasn't aged well, but it's an interesting game. Storyline and everything's just really enjoyable. Coming in at number... Four is the uh, series Injustice Gods Among Us, and I'm just going to show you cover like here, Year One, Volume Three. I mean, uh, the Year Three, Volume One. I got it mixed up. And of course, here we have on the front, obviously Superman, Batman, and. Don't know too much about that character. Now, obviously, we see, like, a symbol for alchemy and stuff. That's because it's going to revolve a little bit, obviously, in that particular time period. But this is, of course, another alternative universe, which DC is known really well for multiverses. Um, and basically, it's just a really interesting overall story arc, I believe. And I've been really hooked. And I just recently picked up the game for uh, PS3. Injustice Gods Among Us game, mainly because of the graphic novel, is what got me interested in wanting to try the game. So in the future, once I get a little better at it, I might try to do a little bit of a game review of Injustice Gods Among Us and give my personal viewpoints overall of the gameplay and things. Coming in at number three, he has a special series, which is one of the first graphic novels I actually bought in hardback. Because there aren't too many graphic novels I'm willing to pay for hardback just because there is a pretty big price difference between and paperback. And that is a special series which I hope eventually we can see. Hopefully Fox and Marvel can get their acts together and work out some type of business deal so they can turn this graphic novel into an actual movie. And it stretches like 12 or 13 issues. And uh, that is, of course... The Avengers versus the X-Men, which is really interesting to say the least. I will say that much. If you ever get a chance to check out Avengers versus X-Men, and it takes place farther in the future because, and of course, we see the re-arise of uh, the Dark Phoenix, 
and everything. It's just an interesting overall. And in this situation, uh, Wolverine takes the side of the Avengers over the X-Men. Because, obviously, through a period of time, Wolverine becomes more and more of a team person with the Avengers. Though he's also a big loner, to be fair. But overall, it's a really interesting and a really great storyline. I will see of graphic, graphic novel collections. Coming in at number two is the Amazing Spider-Man Special Collection of like 30, was it like 32 issues or something? Uh, from Todd McFarlane. Yes, this is the Todd McFarlane Collection of Amazing Spider-Man. And it's just gorgeous. And the storylines are good too because, keep in mind, Todd did not write the storylines for these comics. Which is why they had a decent storyline. But the reason why it really gets so high up, besides being also Spider-Man, is because it's Tom McFarlane. And anyone by now that's listened to me on comic book reviews and general different things involving comics knows I'm a uber Tom McFarlane fan. Love his work. And outside of him, I mean, I do appreciate other uh, people such as uh, Frank Miller, obviously. I thank him for uh, undoing all the crap damage that, like, Adam West and stuff did to Batman and bringing a good, gritty, dark tone to Batman, obviously. And number one is Spawn Origins, which is a collection of a lot. Now, this right here is a hardback collection. Origins, book number five. Now, this is beautiful, personally. And, of course, as I mentioned before, like, uh, the one who supplies me most of my comics, graphic novels and stuff, is a shop where I live called Purple Earth. And it's called that for a good reason, because it's purple on the outside of the comic book store. Here in West Virginia. But, really great. It is just gorgeous and spawn is such an amazing character. Not to mention, you have characters like a certain dragon character, which, if you grew up in the nice, you know who this character is. And Dukes it out with Spawn, which just is awesome to watch. I mean, literally, I, a lot of times, just can't stop looking at the beautiful artwork of Todd McFarlane. And this collection is no different in the amazing art design and overall art look. I mean, it's, I just wish you could find more artists and stuff like Tom McFarlane. But that is the top 10 graphic novels. So leave a comment, tell me what your favorite graphic novels are, please. Subscribe, thumbs up this video, share, give me feedback, and I'll see you all again here in YouTube land tomorrow, and perhaps might be doing a review later today. Now, I'm debating whether or not we'll see after I see Captain America Civil War if I might do a spoiler discussion or not about it. We shall see, since I did for Batman v Superman. So, until next time. Out there in YouTube land, peace out, same YouTube time, same YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time here in YouTube land.